When is the best time to prune your fruit trees? Winter, spring, summer, or fall? These are the issues that we're gonna address in today's lesson. And today, I'm here in the middle of summer, right at the beginning of summer actually, first week of July, and I'm going to be pruning my fruit trees. But is this the best time of the year to prune your fruit trees? That's what we're gonna answer. Hi, my name's Charles Malky, biologist and plant expert with Ivory Gangs, but we grow cool plants and author, saving the world with the home garden. And I've started pruning my trees that first week of summer, that June 20th, June 23rd, 24th, as I was harvesting the fruit off of my tree, I was beginning to prune my fruit. And I've been teaching these lessons throughout Southern California this year and have got to teach upwards of 100 people. And I asked the question, when is the best time of the year to prune? And I get these answers that are all over the place from January through December, the fall, um, late winter, summer. And the answer is after the last chance of frost has passed your grow zone. And so that is your best time for pruning or even major pruning, being those branches that are greater than two and three years of age. And so you're basically pruning just as the plant is coming out of hibernation. The answer again is not by pruning in winter or spring or fall. The answer is again, after that last chance of frost has passed. By pruning too soon, let's say you're pruning in December or you're pruning in October or November, just as the leaves are falling, what you're doing is you're pruning back the tree that is still going through major stresses of winter. The goal is to wait for that stress of winter to pass, waiting for the last chance of frost to pass, and then to begin the pruning. So I hope that's helpful when it comes to the number one most important time of the year to prune your trees. But the second most important time to prune your trees is after you harvest the fruit. And here we are with our Emerald Drop Plua that we got from Floyd Zager. It's one of his hybrid fruit trees, which is an organic cross between a plum and an apricot, hence the name Plua. On our property, we've got four of these hybrid Zager genetic fruit trees that are offered through the Dave Wilson Nursery Network. And so you can simply go to their website and check out all the nurseries closest to you that offer Dave Wilson Nursery fruit trees. Specifically, these are Zager genetic hybrids. So this here is the Emerald Drop Pluot. We also have from Floyd Zager, and I'm going to share with you the results of the after pruning as we've already harvested the fruit off of our Dapple Supreme. And just behind you is our Sweet Treat Pluary. And then off to the side of our property, we also have another Zager genetic tree known as the Spice Z Nectoplum. And I'll show and share with you what's so cool about this tree as well. Without any further ado, the number two most important time of the year for pruning your fruit trees is after the fruit harvest. Not sooner, because you're gonna need all those branches and ultimately those leaves, which are solar panels, capitalizing on making those sugars and proteins and all of the nutrients that are going into making your fruit. But once you harvest those fruit, we can now begin to prune. So let me harvest these fruit so I can share with you my next few helpful tips on summer pruning. Let's get going. So check out all of the fruit that we picked off of, again, our Emerald Drop Plua, the Plum Apricot Cross. And there's still a couple more fruit in here. I'm six feet tall, my reach is about eight. You can see that I can get these last two right over here, fortunately. And then check out the height on this tree. So if my reach is eight, the tree so is about two times taller than my reach. So it's about 16 feet tall. And this tree is grafted on a semi dwarf rootstock. Had it been on a standard rootstock, it would still be about another 10 feet taller than that. So if we allow this tree now to go into dormancy this year and come next spring, those blooms are going to be 16 feet up in the air. And if it's blooming 16 feet up there, then the fruit are going to be 16 feet up there as well way out of reach even with a ladder so as long as those 
blooms are all within reach come spring of next year, then so will your fruit harvest. So now we're off to pruning and you should not need a saw. And my next helpful tip is that your pruning should be restricted to that growth that happened this year with all that new growth and or last year. So you're restricting your growth to one and two year old growth and not going beyond that. Again, a reminder to what we said just earlier is that you're saving your major pruning being that pruning to wood that is over two years old for after that last chance of frost date occurs as the tree's metabolism is, you know, at its slowest moment, but you're also doing it at a time where its recovery and healing is gonna be shortly thereafter, within a few weeks. So now that we talked about the rule, summer pruning restricted to first and second year growth, I'm telling you from now, I'm gonna violate the rule. I see some growth in there that's about two to three years old that I also wanna take just because I do wanna um, control the structure. Another reason for summer pruning, really important helpful tip, is that it's gonna create another explosion of vegetative growth so that you're gonna get your growth right where you want it. I'm gonna share that with the pruning that I've done on a couple of the other Zager genetic trees that we've got here on our property. This principle applies to all of your deciduous fruit trees, whether they be apples, peaches, plums, apricots, you name it. But the exception is, um, one being is your figs because figs, you can actually prune them heavily, again, after that last chance to frost date, and as long as you're not relying on that Brabba crop, which is that first crop, your primary crop is gonna be on all of the new growth. However, when it comes to these trees, such as, again, your peaches, plums, apricots, and so forth, all of those blooms are gonna be on those branches that go into dormancy come fall. So we wanna make sure that by fall with these trees, that all the branches are within reach, and that's gonna guarantee the fact that all of your flowers and ultimately your fruits are all gonna be within reach too. So what I wanna share with you next is the difference between first year growth and second year growth. The first year growth will have leaves on all of those branches. So you can see that there's leaves covering this entire branch. This is all first year growth. If you take a look over here, this is last year's growth. And then this year's growth is from here and continues onward. So as we get into pruning, what I wanna highlight is if you take a look in here, you can see that the goal, just as like with your roses, and this uh, principle applies pretty much with all of your other plants, is to create this vase-shaped structure. And you can see like, for example, these two branches are too close. So one of them is likely gonna get thinned out. And over here, you can see there's a, you know, a few more branches competing for this same triangular space. The goal is gonna be to thin those out as well. And I'm going to start pulling them back like so. And by opening the central part of the tree, the goal is you're improving ventilation, the movement of air throughout the plant, and also increasing light penetration. That's also gonna help reduce the risk of having any fungus and mold and even pests and disease within the structure of the tree by keeping it, again, open, light, and airy. And that's the goal here. We're also, again, trying to structure the branches so that they're growing away from the center. So the center of the tree is kind of where this green stake is. And I'm going to basically select those branches that are not competing with this central airy space. So this here is one of the branches that's reaching about eight feet. I'm gonna bring it down to about six, maybe even down to five feet. The goal is it's gonna push a few more feet of growth during the summer months before it then goes into hibernation come fall. And by fall, all the branches will be within eight feet, resulting in flowers come spring that are within eight feet. And obviously, as we've said before, fruit that are all gonna be within reach. So here we go. And that's it. I'm now just gonna continue thinning within the structure of the tree, looking for branches that are competing for the same area and you know, selecting branches that might be the one year over the two years or the two years over the one year. And again, the goal is as the tree increases in strength, it's gonna be able to better support a heavier harvest from year to year. So we just cut the tree. It's the first week of July. Again, we started pruning our trees starting mid-June as we're harvesting those fruit behind me and in front of me and throughout the garden. 
And I'm gonna share with you the results in just a moment as we get through these next two steps. The next one being very important is that the day you prune, especially summer prune your trees, make sure that you immediately whitewash your trees with the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard. What this will do for your trees is now protect your plants from damaging summer sunburn. A lot of professional orchard growers throughout the country also whitewash their trees in the fall to protect their plants from the effects of damaging winter sun scald. And that's where your daytime temperatures still might be hot like today, but your nighttime low temperatures dip in the freezing temperatures and causes the bark to crack. A lot of the trees begin drying out and come spring, they may push out blooms, but they immediately dry out and die shortly thereafter. So by whitewashing your trees, you're also protecting them from the effects of winter sun scald, in addition to the effects of damaging summer sunburn. We've demonstrated over the years, trees suffering first, second, third degree sunburns, whether they be citrus or avocados, or even your roses can burn when those tree trunks are exposed to 14 hot hours of daylight compared to in the winter, they're only dealing with about 10. Ivy Organic is Armory certified for organic gardening to give organic gardeners as well as organic orchards an alternative to conventional foods so that you can grow things that are the best and most nutritious and healthiest foods they can possibly grow. If you're putting paint on your trees, you gotta keep in mind that every year or two, all of that paint is gonna contaminate your garden soil and paint is designed to last 100 years or more. Additionally, paint traps moisture. And if you take a look at your research, when it comes to prune branches, as we're gonna be protecting them today from the entry of beetles and termites and even disease, if you put paint on it, that's gonna trap moisture and that's gonna to contribute to underlying rot. Ivory Organic dries on porous, allowing the exchange of moisture and nutrients so that those coated surfaces do not rot. Additionally, Ivory Organic's 31 Plant Guard has seven natural oils, which include castor, cinnamon, clove, garlic, peppermint, rosemary, and spearmint that are natural insect and rodent repellent oils, in addition to a base powder, which includes diatomaceous earth, which is another insect repellent protection, added protection to your coated trees. You can also use the product as a total plant protection, applying it to even the foliage to protect them from the hottest days of summer. Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard can also be diluted down to make a total plant protection as a foliar spray to protect the plants from the effects of the hottest days of summer, but also works as an anti-transparent, helping your plants with transplant shock. Important at the time of up potting or planting in ground is to do, apply a total plant protection foliar spray using the Ivory Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard. If pests are not an issue in your garden, you can use the whitewash formula, which is an oil-free alternative for protecting your plants from the effects of weather extremes. So today we're using color brown instead of white. White is the most popular color, but if you're wanting something that's a little bit more aesthetic, something that matches your tree trunks, you can consider using brown. There's other colors available as well, which are green and gray and grayish. And I'm gonna share with you some other colors that I've painted on our fruit trees here on the property. And the goal now is we're protecting the heart of the tree, which is your tree trunk and those lower branches. As long as the heart of the tree is protected, then the tree is gonna have a very long, healthy, productive life on your property. So if you take a look up here, there's one wound that I just protected over here, but I found a smaller one over here, which should be protected as well. This could be an entryway for beetles and termites. If you come in a little lower, you can see that there's another wound over here that we're gonna patch up like so. And again, we're protecting it with the seven natural oils. We're protecting with the diatomaceous earth that are all encapsulated in this base protection powder that is going to offer this plant about a year of protection from weather. And if pests are the issue, you may want to, you may want to reapply about two to three times a year. Again, if pests are the target, if you know that there's beetles and termites living within your trees, such as peach tree borers or in your roses, if you see that those holes are coming back to the tree, because again, they may, might be inhabiting within the tree. If you see some holes, you might want to patch those up. And we're gonna continue going all the way up the tree trunk and again, protecting also those lower branches. You can see that we've got some pruned areas over here. 
And again, some scarring happening. If you have any grafting wounds, this is an excellent product to protect those areas while they continue to heal and to ensure that they remain pest and disease free. So here we are now, protecting those pruned surfaces from beetles and termites and disease. And then all of that sun exposed bark, we're protecting the bark with the ivory organic, which is ultimately protecting the underlying to the bark is that cambium layer, which transports the waters and minerals up and down the tree. And now let me share with you what we've done just two short weeks ago and the results. Check this out. This here to my left is the Dapple Supreme Plua. It's basically a cross between the Dapple Dandy and the Flavor Supreme. Two excellent Floyd Zager genetic hybrid fruit trees. He basically crossed the genetics from these two amazing parents to create, again, the Dapple Supreme Plua. And we pruned this one about two weeks ago. And now what we have is this new flush of growth, this new vigor that's being pushed out. And we're now getting it controlled and in an area where we want it. And the thing that I wanna highlight most here is that these lower branches, cause again, we wanna make sure that there's fruit within picking reach. Look at all of this new flush of growth and that's gonna basically push out more branches and more compact growing in this like, you know, three feet off the ground area. And what's gonna happen as these branches then now go into hibernation within the next 90 days or so, is that we're gonna end up with more buds that are gonna result in more blooms, which will ultimately result in more fruit in this little tiny compact area. Had we not summer pruned, what would happen is all of the minerals and resources and waters would go to benefit the highest parts of the tree to the detriment as it shades these lower branches. But now, as you can see, these lower branches are getting light and they're happy. So as you can clearly see here, that protecting the wood is not gonna interfere with the budding and the natural growth that the tree is gonna have if you protect it using the Ivory Organics 3-in-1 Plant Guard or whitewash formulas. So this here is the Spice Z Nectaplum. It's one of Floyd Zager's most popular of his hybrid fruit trees in America. And it's for obvious reasons. For one, it's a pop out, like eye catching, dual purpose fruit tree. For one, it's ornamental looking with its beautiful red and purple foliage, which eventually turns dark green. And it also produces some delicious Nectar plums, as the name, the Spice Z Nectar Plum. It's a cross between the nectarine and many of you may have seen purple plum trees. So they got the purple leaf from the purple plum, crossed it with some nectarines to create these delicious Nectar Plums. Last but not least, my personal favorite of the Floyd Zager hybrid fruit trees is the Sweet Treat. Pluary. And the reason is one, the flavor is just absolutely outstanding. And secondly, the fruit size are kind of like a cherry, a little bit bigger because of the plum hybrid cross. It also stays on your tree for a solid about two to four weeks. So it gives you, you know, a longer extended period of harvesting fruit compared to cherries alone. So that hybrid and plum cross sweet tree Pluary. Again, one of the most delicious of fruits our family has ever tasted. This one here is one of our prized possessions here on the property and looking forward to hopefully planting a few more in the upcoming years. And as you can see, and what I wanna share if you come in a little closer, this sweet treat pluary was protected using the Ivy Organic 3-in-1 Plant Guard color Grage, which is my personal favorite. I feel like it offers a nice light protection, um, but also gives it still some color. The combination between colors gray and brown to make that grayish color. And if you take a look here, again, we protect it all the way from the base of the tree, trunk going up, all of the lower branches. What I also wanna share with you is in those areas where we prune, just check out all of this new growth in just two short weeks, even over here where we pruned a major branch. This is about three years of growth right here in the center, surrounded by this crown is pushing out all of this new, young, tender growth coming right through the product. What I wanna highlight over here is had this been protected using latex paint and especially on new tender growth, you can see there's a ton of flaking happening 
And had this been paint, these flakes are gonna be in your garden soil for a very, very long time compared to you're using ingredients that are based on traditional methods such as limestone, but it also includes these milk proteins that help it last about as long as using a latex paint on your tree. So the next most important thing to do for your fruit tree is to feed it. And it's shocking again. More than 90% of the people when asked this question over the last 30 days in classes I've taught throughout Southern California, I would ask, when is the most important month of the year for feeding your trees? And the answer was just about every single month of the year. Shocking. Most popular answer, spring, which is logical. You're planting your trees and you're feeding them. But the most important month of the year for feeding your plants organically, the answer is May. And that is so that your products break down and get into the soil and offer those elements to the tree by June, which is when the light hours are peaking, temperatures are peaking, plant metabolism is peaking, and you're gonna to wanna to make sure all those nutrients are in the soil. Ivory Organics offers your plants all six plant macronutrients. That's another thing a lot of people don't know is that they're just focused on the NPK, which is that 333, nitrogen, phosphorus, potassium. But the Ivory Organics all-purpose fertilizers contain all plant primary nutrients and secondary nutrients, which include calcium, magnesium, and sulfur. All six plant macronutrients need to be in the soil in abundance. This super blend has plus azomite, and then the premium blend is just a lower NPK percentage. So you've got your premium blend and super blend, which is plus azomite. And azomite is simply crushed volcanic rock to give your plants a lot of the micronutrients that they need for optimal plant growth and health. As we mentioned, this chart, I've been sharing it with you guys here on the Ivory Organics YouTube channel over the last many years. But again, I go to these classes and I'm telling you more than 90% of the people there don't follow this chart where it comes spring, you only feed your plants about maybe half the recommended dose so that you can follow the back of the package and apply the maximum recommended dose by summer. Organically, that should be May and June. If you have not yet fed your plants for the summer, do it now. And then come fall, give it half the recommended dose by early fall. And then going into winter, Ivory Organics using the super and premium blend fertilizers you can make your own foliar spray on your tropical plants, your evergreen plants, such as your avocados and your citrus and your mangoes and bananas and passion fruit and all of those plants that are evergreen to make sure that they have all the macronutrients in the plant during the winter months so that come spring, they can produce the maximum blooms and fruit set. Correcting nutritional deficiencies in spring, most research will say it's too late. You gotta make sure that all the nutrient deficiencies are corrected in winter so that come spring bloom those blooms hold fruit so i'm there here with the super blend all-purpose fertilizer and i'm just going to feed the entire root zone with product again this is going to feed the whole soil biology which includes earthworms beneficial bacteria mycorrhiza and if you're using synthetic products that are not organic you're actually hurting all of that soil biology. You're definitely not feeding the soil biology if you're using, as some people call it chemical, but it's really synthetic fertilizers. So we're just gonna get that in contact with the topsoil. And as soon as we begin to water, the fertilizer action is gonna begin to work with the soil. So I hope you've enjoyed this educational lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics on summer pruning. Here we are in July and we started pruning about two weeks ago those last couple of weeks of June as we harvested those fruit. And I hope this motivates and encourages all of you guys to get out there and not be afraid to summer prune your fruit trees now that you've got all of these helpful tips on whitewashing to protect your plants from that risk of damaging summer sunburn, feeding your plants as well with all of the six macronutrients, which keep in mind, phosphorus, in addition to producing flowers and fruit, also make your plants more drought tolerant and can better tolerate those days without water, especially if you're dealing with us, for example, here in Southern California with water restrictions, phosphorus is an important element with proper watering to make sure your plants remain even further drought tolerant. If you've enjoyed this lesson brought to you by Ivory Organics, give us that thumbs up and most importantly, share us with your gardening friends and family and keep growing with Ivory Organics and wishing you all happy gardening.